Hello, I hope this video finds you well. Tonight we are going to look at count code from string 2, and this is the Java solution. The problem states return the number of times that the string code appears anywhere in the given string, except we'll accept any letter for the D. So cope and co it count. That's C-O-O-E. And we can look at this case. Here's our string, and we see that code appears once, so we return 1. In this case, we have code, so that's 1, and we have code, that's 2. And in the third case, we have cos. C-O-Z-E, so that counts because it's the C-O-D, and we have cope. So that's C-O-D. So really what this problem is, the base algorithm here is counting the instances of a substring in a string. And I've talked about we need to understand reading frames for this. And reading frames are the idea of how many letters do we look at as we're going through a string at a time, and this lets us set up our loop. I think this problem has been included to ensure you, you know how to use a loop and not use the string collapse approach. Because if you followed along and last night did the count high or you did the count or the cat dog problem, we could use this shortcut by collapsing the string and comparing their lengths. But we can't do that here because there's 26 possibilities to show up because the middle letter doesn't matter. It's just the C, O, and E. This could be, this middle letter could be anything, A, B, C, D, E, all the way to Z. So what we need to do is loop through, and we're just going to check those three letters and then add one to our sum. So let's set up our loop. Well, the best way to kind of figure out your loop is to say, okay, well, what is my first substring that I'm going to need, which are those four, and what is my last substring I'm going to need, which are those four. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write the parameters. So in the first case, it's going to go from 0 to 4, remember, inclusive, exclusive. Um, I'm just using Python shorthand for this. It's just faster. And in this case, it's going to be from 6 to 10. Again, inclusive, exclusive, and I feel confident that I'm going to get a length of 4 because 10 minus 6 is 4. So when I set up my for loop to do this now, I'm going to say for oops, int i equals 0, because that's where I want to start. i is less than, well, I want it to be less than 7, and i is equal to i plus 1. And if you've been following along, I've said, okay, well, we can't put 7 here because the strings will be different length. So how do I relate 7 to 10? Because that's the length of the string here. Well, that is going to be str.length minus 3. And so now I have this ability to go through this whole string. So now what's going to happen is each time I loop through, if I'm looking at four characters at a time, I'm going to look at that. Then i becomes 1, i becomes 2, i becomes 3, i becomes 4. I becomes 5, I becomes 6, and we're done. But here's, here's another but. We're not going to pull out all four letters. We're just going to look at, we come back here, we only care about the first two letters and the last letter. So even though I'm going to look at four, four letters, I have like a spread of four, I only want to look at three of them. That is at index 0, index 1, and index 3. I don't care about index 2. And here is going to be index 1, index 2, and index 4. So we're going to make an int called count, and we'll set it equal to 0. And what I'm going to do is do an if statement, and I'm going to use char at. So I'm going to say if str.char at 0 is equivalent to c, and str.char at 1 is equivalent to o, and str.char at I don't care about the third letter, so I'm going to say 0, 1, 2, 3 is equivalent to E. Well, if we have the C, O, and the E, then I don't care about the middle letter, so therefore count is equal to count plus 1. And now you probably caught this and you said, wait a second, that's only going to deal with the first case. So let's relate it to I. If we think about I in this case, I would be 0, so we'll set that to I. This Next one would be i plus 1, i plus 1, and this one would be i plus 3. Oops, there we go. And now once we've gone through our loop, we return the count. And that's it. So this is a really nice example of a problem, again, where we have taken some core algorithm we know, that is counting the number of times we see a substring in a larger string, and we've tweaked it. We use the same basic loop structure to figure out what that loop runs for, but we have to use some modified if statement on the inside.
I hope that video helped. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.